Hey folks, welcome to Spank Wagon. I'm Murphy. I'm Solitaire. And I'm Melissa. And uh, we are here live at the Brendan Theaters for the Scott Pilgrim premiere here. Um, I wrangled some new friends. Well, everyone remembers Solitaire. She's been on the show a couple times. Geek Girl World, that's yeah. her website. But we have a new friend. Hi. Tell him about you. Oh, that's what I was supposed to do. I'm awkward. <laughs> Hi, I'm Melissa. I am a YouTube blogger. My YouTube account is youtube.com slash akmelza, A-K-M-E-L-Z-A. Point I'd... here. It's going to be right there on it's the screen. Be... Oh. Right there. That's fancy. Yes. How they do that. It's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Movie magic. So, vlogger, geek girl, drunk. And uh, we're here with the guys from Comic Oasis. Uh, they're getting set up right now. We'll show you some stuff they're doing. And um, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Trent, you're here. Spankwagon, spankwagon.net. And I'm here at Tommy's Tit for Tat Tattoo Parlor because it's time for me to get some ink. Uh, gonna have you hang out with us while we do the process and you can finally see me cry. The same as I did on my wedding day. Tell them what they're watching, Trench. Spankwagon.net. Hey, folks. I'm Murphy, and uh, you're watching Spankwagon. And today we're going to do something a little special for you. We've got a couple of product reviews we're going to do. We've gotten some great uh, feedback from you guys on the ones we've done in the past. So today we have a couple of beer ones for you. Not only a uh, beer review, but also an instructional video. As most of you guys know, we are huge fans of the mini kegs, both the Heineken and the Newcastle version. And some of you may not have ever seen them or seen how the tapping process on them works. We're going to show you today. So uh, let's go ahead and go to the fridge. So this is the Newcastle Mini Cake. Uh, it's identical to the Heineken version, uh, other than it's not green. Still carbonated, still requires 10 hours of refrigeration if you're buying it warm for it to be uh, fully chilled. And also, it lasts for 30 days. Usually they don't make it 30 days in my house around here, especially with the spank wagon crew around, but we have them. Now, you could also get a uh, desktop unit for these that will uh, keep it cold and keep it on the, on the desk so you have a little tap on it. These units go anywhere from about 60 to 200 bucks. I'm not going to spend the money on that, and I highly doubt any of you are, because that's money we could be spending on beer. So in the uh, container with all of your gear, you get the little spigot, and you get your depre depressor, depressing, your trencher, it depresses. You're going to want one of those, and you get these. So what you have to do is first you have to rinse that out. I've already done it. So then you take your little nozzle here, and you put this on right there on your little guy. This is what this is going to do is it's going when you hook this guy in, it actually forces this part down into the keg and the pressurized beer comes out. Now I got to warn you, usually when you do this you get a little beer squirt. So what I'm going to do is grab a couple of glasses for me and my man Trench. I'm just going to put that one right there just to be on the safe side. Good pan down just a hair there Trench. Let him see the uh, the glass there. You just take this little guy just like this. It fits right inside. right in there and you give it just a little push and when you give it the push you're gonna get a little beer here there you go oh look at that Perfect. so now our Newcastle mini keg is ready to pour our spout is in there our little depressor aka our trencher is in there the first thing you're gonna to want to do of course is just take this thing up there and jam it and get some beer no you have to pour about a quarter to a half a glass first because you've got all this foam that's going to be in there, especially from that pressurized unit popping in there first. So you take your glass, always keep your glass at an angle. You take your glass and you just give a little bit of a pour. I usually like to do no, about a quarter, a third of the glass. Just there, just gets all the dust out, anything that might be in the top. Pour that out. And then you're ready to enjoy a nice cold glass of, New of Newcastle. So, I'm just gonna pour myself a glass here. Very simple, very easy. A lot of people bitch because they like a lot of head on their beer. I don't, I like just a small amount. And there you are. A perfect pour every time. So now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to drink some beer. That's the part that everybody's waiting for. Uh, 
Um, at parties, we've actually just taken a bucket of ice and put this thing in a bucket, covered ice around it, it's good to go. I will tell you one thing that's important, if you're going to keep this in your fridge or if you have it out for uh, parties or something, have something like a uh, paper towel or a sponge or something because this guy will drip. You get a little bit of drip just like when you take a leak, guys. You get a little bit of drip there every time. Not a big deal. Yummy, yummy beer. All right, folks, so uh, I'm Murphy. I'm Trencher. And this is beer. Uh, we're both big fans of Newcastle. And uh, usually, you know, we get it in the bottles, but, you know, we've been lucky enough to get our hands on a couple of these mini kegs. Or I've from got, the waitresses. Or from the waitresses, yeah. From the waitresses, well, that's going to be from a regular draft, though. Yeah. So, hot waitress. Hot waitress. She's a good friend of ours. You guys will meet, here hopefully, meet her hopefully sure. soon. So, um, this is the Newcastle mini keg draft. Was this your test pour? Uh, no, actually, this one was. Oh, okay. I poured more in this one, so. Uh, cheers. Drink, bitches. I really like the draft keg. Let me tell you why. Sometimes with a bottle, you get a little bit of a twinge, a little almost not metallic, but a little bit of a weird aftertaste. You don't get that with the draft. No, you don't get it with the draft. Plus, it's actually, um, if words can be used for beer, smoother and creamier would actually be good words to use for what comes out of this uh, versus what comes out of a can or a bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, it is as close as possible uh, to actual keg draft mm -hmm. that you would get at a bar, mm -hmm. um, but affordable. Yeah, 20 bucks is what we usually pay for these. The Heineken ones right now are on sale for about 18, but uh, 20 bucks for one of these and you get 10 pints out of it. Uh, it's a five liter mini keg. Or and a by 10 pint. pints, that's usually three pulls for Murphy. Yeah, this by the way is a pint glass. If you're not drinking your beer out of these, you are failed. Um, you know, I see a lot of guys, they'll like to grab the, uh, a mug. A refrigerated mug. I keep these in the freezer. Nothing is... wrong with a refrigerated mug. No, not at all. Just not for Newcastle. Beer, especially beer like this, it's meant to be chilled, but not cold. Yeah. You actually ruin a lot of flavor from beer by making it too cold. Now, American beer is a little bit different because American beer has usually higher, uh, lo lower alcohol, which means more available water. Um, inside of a frosted mug like this, that's great. But in a, uh, in a situation where you have a beer like this or a Guinness or something like that, a chilled glass or slightly chilled beer is okay, but you never want ice cold in a Newcastle. That's just a bad idea. Say that for the American beer when you're trying to hide the taste. <laughs> Remember, folks, American beer is a lot like having sex in a canoe. Fucking too close to water. That was good. You like that? Very good. Nice. So, uh, guys, we're... Oh, wait. I want to do this real quick. You Go ahead. Murph, what are they watching? You're watching Spankwagon. Spankwagon.net. Drink, bitches. Love that. Oh, fuck you. <coughs> now we're just mugging for the camera. Yeah, pretty much. Folks, you're watching Spankwagon. We're still here at the Brandon Theaters for the Scott Pilgrim premiere. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. The guys from Comic Oasis are here, and well, we'll let them tell you what they're doing. Bangham.com is a forum that is devoted to anime, manga, comics, uh, cartoons, 
socializing, that's pretty much what we do. We spam. We like to spam a lot. Um, you probably know me from Twitter and all my Twitter ramblings, you know, the Prince lyrics. Most of the time I'm dancing naked to Prince lyrics, so, you know, just know that when you're reading a Prince lyric from me on Twitter, I'm probably naked when you're reading it, okay? <laughs> and I guess that's it. That's pretty much all I need to say right now. Whatever else I'll say, I'll say on Twitter. <laughs> .net. Hey Tommy, what are you doing? I am about to make trench bleed. Great. And I do plan on tipping well. How does that work out? You ready there, trench? Oh yeah. No, no, don't break. Look right here with me. You want to see that that shot, that initial shot? Oh yeah. What are they watching, French? Spankwagon. You can find us online, spankwagon.net. What are you having done tonight, French? I'm having gears placed on my back. Why gears? I'm not going to say, but they look... Oh, my shoulder blade. That's all right, dude. You got another one. You'll be fine. Yeah, fuck you. Oh, wait. That other one's going to be covered in ink, too, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I hate being scrawny. Being a fat ass wouldn't help you either, dude. I know. Thicker or thin, I'm fucked. Either way. You know what, Murph? What's that? It is a beautiful piece of art, though. It is amazing. I hear his voice. If it doesn't hurt, it isn't worth it. I know. Mm. Such a gearhead. I gotta remember to breathe. If you forget and pass out, dude, you get to laugh. No, I'll give you CPR. Oh, no, you won't. With my ball. Oh, fuck you. Tea bag resurrection. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Oh, fuck you. And that's the Murphy, not the guy with the needles. <sighs> you know what the best part about this is, Murph? What's that? The pain. It's good, but I'm already kicking my own ass for thinking of it. <laughs> Oh, there are the faces. There they are. Oh, be you I know, it's awesome though. No, no, right? Tommy, make it last. No, fuck you, Chris. Let's get some shading in there. Get the purple out. What do you think so far, Tommy? Uh, he's shaking a lot. And I don't get it, because I'm barely touching him with the needle. I know. I'm a pansy, I warned you about that. Well, that's the other thing. If he pushes really hard, that needle's going to go all the way throughout the front. You know what's funny? After all the fat jokes I, make about, I made about Trench when he was a big guy, he doesn't realize that all the skinny jokes I, made about, I make about him now are just compliments. Watching SpankWagon.net. Hi, everybody. My name is Melissa, and like I said earlier, I am a YouTube blogger. Basically, that means that I'm the type of person who likes to sit in front of a camera and talk to themselves, and people like watching it, which is kind of weird. Um, I'm pretty active in the internet community. I have YouTube, I have Twitter, I have Daily Booth. 
Uh, I even have my own personal blog, but it's kind of lame. Um, uh, I live in Las Vegas, obviously. I just moved here from Anchorage, Alaska about eight months ago, and I'm currently going to school for criminal justice. So that's all sorts of interesting stuff. And now you know a little bit more about me. Good morning, everybody out there in YouTube land. What are you doing in my bed? Oh, you'd like to see what a day in my life is like? Okay, then. What a lovely morning. I like to start off every day fully clothed because I think you should already be completely prepared for your day. Remember, if you're not wearing clothes, you're naked. Let's move on. I think it's important to start off the day in a positive way with a healthy breakfast of sugar. I think the best method is to swallow a teaspoon of sugar every morning. Not only does it help the medicine go down, but it helps make your day just a little bit brighter. Another important thing in my daily routine is fitness. Exercise is very important, so I like to practice it every morning. For this portion of the video, I'm having assistance from my dog. His name's Nacho. He only has one eye. And Nacho's going to help me out in my exercise routine because I like using the best form of cardio ever, which is doggy dancing. Come on, Nacho. Let's go. I love you. I think good personal hygiene is an important part of the day, and I practice it thoroughly. But when I do it, I like to keep it classy, by wearing a tie. You'll notice, just like the rest of my day, I do it fully clothed, because I think it's very important not to be naked. I will now demonstrate proper showering technique. Then, after drying myself off through the movie magic known as editing, I like to take a tip from Marsha Brady and brush my hair 100 times. For those of you who don't understand that joke, I ask you this. Where were you in the early 70s, hmm? Another important part of the day is just coming out and getting some fresh air. I'm not stealing this from Wazy Wear. Growing up in Alaska, I had to learn to defend myself from scary animals like moose and bears. Though in Nevada, I don't have to worry about scary animals like moose and bears, I still like to keep myself prepared in the event that I have to battle one. Punch! 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 Take that bear! Take that bear! Are you scared of me, bear? Are you scared of me, bear? Are you scared of me? Looks like my bedroom's safe from bears once more. Welcome to my desk. This right here is where the magic happens. This is where I edit and upload all of my videos. But other times, I like to just sit here and relax. Look at porn. I mean, pictures of puppies. Puppies. I'd like to thank you guys for coming along with me for my day. I feel like we've learned a lot about each other through our experiences and adventures, and I think that we've grown a little bit as people together. I encourage you to rate, comment, and subscribe, and maybe even check out some of my other videos. Until next time, I'll see you guys, and don't forget, Having a great day is all about being fantastic, like me. Hey folks, welcome back to Spank Wagon. I'm Murphy. And I'm Holly. And that's Holly. Holly's awesome. Uh, <laughs> you guys remember Holly? We made her put on the wedding dress. Uh, Holly's one of the folks down at Comic Oasis. Remind them where Comic Oasis is. It's at Shine and Rainbow in the Walmart Shopping Center, right next to the Radio Shack and the Avis. Can't really go wrong with that. Yeah. And uh, we are here with Holly. Here at Brendan Theaters doing the Scott Pilgrim thing, which is awesome. Tell them what's going on tonight, Holly. Uh, they're pretty much just playing the soundtrack, um, selling stuff, giving out free stuff. That's pretty much it. Going in the movie. Yeah, there's all kinds of cool stuff that they're giving away tonight. We've got these, um, well, these soundtrack cards, these kind of cool things. And there's a poster. I mean, that's like really cool. And there are some shirts too. I mean, all of this cool stuff going on here and you're watching on the internet on a Monday when we did this on a Friday and told you all we'd be here. 
that makes you fucking stupid and all of us a lot cooler than you. Mm. Suck it. So, uh, what else is going on, Holly? You don't know? No. No? Just pretty much just selling stuff. That's all, I, that's all I'm here for. Cool. What's cool in the store? Uh, lots of stuff. Tons of stuff cool in the store. Tell them what kind of stuff. <laughs> Tons of Scott Pilgrim stuff. If you want to catch up on the, the comics, we have all the mangas. Um, we have these cute little like paper doll things that we got some templates for. If you want one of those, um, we've got True Blood stuff. Even though I'm not very happy about it, but True Blood stuff. Not happy about True Blood stuff. I and a pack of and a pack of Really? I'm not a huge fan of her from like here up. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of her in general. <laughs> Now, I hear that you did a money painting class recently. Uh, it was just like a little um, uh, thing for money month that Kid Robot does every, I think, June. Yeah. Um, just having different contests and things about painting money money. We're going to do another one this Halloween. Uh, so I think it's going to be Friday before Halloween. No. Very cool. We'll have to update everyone and have you guys come out for that. That'll be great. All right, so Holly, tell them one more time where they can find the store. We're at uh, Shine and Rainbow in the Walmart Shopping Center. It's Comic Oasis. Scott Pilgrim, look in the camera and tell him dot net. Dot net. Camera down. Ready? In three, two. <laughs> Do it. Three. Making it into the clip, into the credits. Where did you slap me? Oh, in the back. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, you know what? This is gonna make it in the episode, guys. Look, Trencher is recovering from a new tattoo. Uh, yeah. Here, uh, let's make sure it's on it. Hey, hang on. Yeah. Oh, and I accidentally just slapped him right in the mm -hmm. back. Oh, you got me in the chest. I earned that one. I earned it. Okay. All right, ready? All right. Are we, we're not focused up anymore. Here we are. I just... Not only is it good for the earth, but it's great for us cheap bastards. Alright, I've got a game for you, Murph. Okay. We've got a fun one today, and uh, what we're going to do is play a guessing game. Oh, awesome. So, penis. Not yet. Okay. Alright, now. We're going to start this off, uh, oh, simple. Let me give you a clue. Ooh. Bull semen. No. Okay. Anything else? Bull semen? Again, no. No, okay. Okay, anything but bull semen. Binocular. Ah, no, 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 no. No? No. Okay. It comes in a box. Me! No. No. But yes. You. But no. Definitely not. No. No. Uh, I'm going to say it is a beverage. You're absolutely right. It is a beverage. But um, you're sure it's not bull semen. I'm very sure it's not bull semen. That's for our friends in Montana. So, so. we have glasses. We have a beverage. I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say you've got beer for us. Sort of. Beer. <laughs> For the opener, for the opener. I thought we were going to try and get Murph semen there for a second. No. No, okay. We have beer, actually. Oh. We've got a different kind of beer. Awesome beer. So what we have here is Brothers Reserve. Uh, this actually, just to read the box, Prickly Pear Bragot. Bragot? Bragot? Bragot. 
Bracket made by Windmer Brothers. Very and good. It is a beer. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we open that, let me read the back here. Because there's there's stuff on the back and stuff on the sides. This is the beer. Words. Our Bracket is words, a... Words, 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 words. Our Bracket is a strong words, ale words, brewed words. with a blend of honey, red pickly, prickly pear juice, and a variety of pale malts. The addition of alchemy hops helps balance the sweetness while retaining the natural honey aromas and flavors. The prickly pear juice adds unique hue to the beer as well as a subtle and refreshing herbal quality in the finish. Um, this is actually a pretty cool beer. One of the neat things about this is that um, they brew it only once. They're never going to brew this again. This is not like a seasonal brew like you get with Sam Adams, even the Utopias, which is every other year. This is a one-time only, one-shot only beer uh, crafted in good old Portland, Oregon. It is a wonderful beer, I'm hoping. Uh, brewed or with, it's bull semen. Or it's bull semen. Brewed with pride by Kurt and Rob Windmere. So the brothers, the, obviously. The brothers. So, um, that's the bottle, or that's the box. Inside the box is the bottle. Now, one thing I gotta say, and this is how you can tell it is a limited edition, not only because it's a gigantic bottle, but because it is a brown bottle served in what's supposed to look like some sort of fancy schmancy box. But a lot of times with these brews, they're not brewed with the same kind of um, techniques, which means they don't last as long, and sunlight will break down the proteins even faster. So More specifically, UV rays. So not just sunlight, but what you may get off of your lighting in your house. Yeah. What you may get off the lighting, and of all things, your fridge mm -hmm. when the light goes on. It also works as a uh, insulating device, because you never want your beer to cycle. You never want to go through heat cycles. That'll kill a beer. Um, I actually have a cooler in the back of my truck for when I go and buy beer. The beer goes right in there because I really don't want it to warm up. Heat cycles kill beer. That would be a lesson. Yes. So, beer today. Um, I love it. It's signed by one or it's checkmarked by one of the brothers here. Um, printed wonder, label. Printed label. I wonder if there's different editions depending upon which one you get. Trench, do the honor please, sir. Will do. On the floor. So, uh, beer, let's take. We'll grab that. I don't want the dog to get. It. <laughs> Especially not your beer loving dog. dog. That dog dog loves beer, and uh, that'd be grim down there. He loves beer, but I have to be careful. Alright, so we're not going to be pretentious to sniff the bottle. Initial sniff right up here. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's try this again. Not going to be pretentious to sniff the cap. No, we're going to smell the bottle. Let's take a look here. Oh, that's different. Trench? Oh, that's very different. It's I almost fruit juicy. Yeah, uh, I'm sure the prickly pear kind of adds a little something to that. Uh, let's go ahead and get that out of here now, since it shut off. So, uh, pint glasses. Do we want pint glasses or do we want to go with the refrigerated mugs on this one? Let's go with pint glasses. Uh, as we've discussed in uh, past events, pint glasses for beer because we're men. Yes. Uh, and it's not American. It's not American. Well, it is an American well, it's beer. Not but it's not a pretentious, but, or it's a pretentious. pretentious? It's not some, yeah, it is pretentious. It's not some mass-produced bullshit beer. Remember, folks, American beer is a lot like having sex in a canoe. Too fucking close to water. No, fucking too close no, to water. fucking comma too close to water. No, it's just too fucking close to water. Why do you have to make it? Fuck your butt. God damn it. Fuck your butt. I might be. Look that one up. All right, guys, so we'll go. That's rude of me. We'll go ahead and we'll pour. Alright guys, so it is a nice golden amber, um, now that it's got a little oxygen in it. Oh, you can definitely smell that. that oh, that pear. That that pear. Kind of, yeah. Definitely, uh, what fruit juices did this say we're uh, Prickly pear and some, let's see, again, it has, uh, I'm almost smelling pineapple. Honey, prickly pear juice, and a variety of pale malts and alchemy hops. So I'm guessing the honey would be, honey flavor is going to be from the, uh, or the, the, Honey is going to contribute to the honey flavor, the maybe honey to the fruity, yeah. the over fruitiness. Yeah, so um, let's give it a taste. By the way, you're watching Spankwagon. Spankwagon.net. Drink, bitches. Wow. Not bad. Ooh. Very smooth. It's creamy. Um, not too big of a head on it, which is nice. Uh, it is a 10% alcohol beer, by the way. I probably should have told you that beforehand. Huh? <laughs> Woo 
Oops. <laughs> um, it is a 10% alcohol beer. You can definitely taste it. It is very smooth. But it, you know what? For a sweeter beer, and um, it wasn't Chimay that I had, but it was another very sweet beer. It was a sweet, dark beer. Left kind of a really bad aftertaste. Uh, this, for a sweet beer, high alcohol content, mm -hmm. is not leaving a bad aftertaste. Actually, no, it's no, a, no. It's, if, if any aftertaste, it's a good aftertaste. On the... Um, on the exhale, and I, I hate to sound like a beer snob or a wine snob, but I mean, I spend a lot of time drinking beer, so I, I kind of know what I'm talking about. It does have wine qualities. I will admit, it absolutely does have wine qualities. On the exhale, you definitely get those alchemy ops. You definitely get that. Uh, it's good. I like it. Yeah, you definitely get that, that little bit of alchemy hop in there. It's, probably, it's good stuff. Probably you shouldn't, pour, shouldn't have poured so much. Well, now we have to drink it. I gotta dry it. Eventually. Only one o'clock. Yay, drunk in the afternoon. Oh no, dude, no afternoon sex, please. Not from you? No, not from me. No afternoon delights in this house. You, you have your wife to wait for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was already instructed I had to be gone when she showed up. Awesome. So, um, prickly pear, Braggett from the Brothers Reserve, the Widmere Brothers. Um, I do, I am a big fan of their, uh, the Widmere Brothers, I am a big fan of their, um, their Hefweizen. On a uh, scale of one to five, one being Coors Light and uh, five being Utopias. Uh, I would give this a solid three and a half. I'm, um, I'm, yeah. I, won't, I won't hunt this beer down, but I will enjoy it if it does show up. Absolutely. This is a great beer and uh, about eight bucks. I picked it up at the local liquor store here. Um, you know, there are a lot of specialty beers. You know, you got your Chimay's and things like that. Um, this is a good one if the boys are coming over and you want to have just something a little bit different. Again, it is a little sweet. So um, you probably don't want to have it, you know, with Chex Mix or anything like that. Yeah, this isn't this isn't a uh, no. NFL beer or no. a football beer. This is whatever. a good this is a good like after dinner beer, especially if you had um, like a good burger, like a good almost a little salty burger that had a little bit of a crisp uh, oh, crust on the outside. Go. There you go. Yeah, um, I myself am a big fan of adding bison and lamb to burgers, so that will definitely make it a little salty. This is a good complement to that, but I certainly wouldn't drink it while eating. It's no. something I would drink after. Yeah. So, mm. so with that, uh, you're watching Spank Wagon. Find us online, spankwagon.net. Dot net. And uh, tell us what you think about the beer reviews, because uh, I see potential bit here. Well, we've done some other reviews, and people really like those, um, especially because we made fun of Twilight. And more importantly, if you have a specific beer you want us oh, to absolutely. try, absolutely, because you have the registered designated drunk, and you have me, the lightweight panty waste uh, of alcoholism. Mm. Um, let us know what you want us to try, and we'll try almost any beer. And I say that. Throw yep. a little asterisk down there somewhere. Almost. Almost any, any beer. beer. We will not try anything made with bull semen. Nope. We'll save that for the hosts that aren't here. So one more time, Truncher, what are they watching? Spankwagon. Spankwagon.net. Drink, bitches. I'm Alexis Baldwin, and hope you have a great selection of comic boys. So it's where I've gotten my comics since before I've worked here. It's great people, great selections. I mean, even statues. If I had the money, I'd get it. They're it's a great place. All right, hey everybody, Trencher, Spankwagon.net, and uh, we're still here at Tommy's, uh, tit for tat. Uh, half done. And, uh, I, you know, this hurt. But after a while, this quit hurting when I got this one done on my chest. And uh, I'm realizing something, though. I have no meat around my spine anymore. So I just feel it straight to my bones. And the, uh, the, the bouncer, Alcatraz, pro wrestler here in indie pro wrestler here in town, goes, hey, just look at it this way. You're massaging your bones. This ain't no shiatsu. No. But I recommend it coming down to Tommy's because uh, he does good work and it's quick work. And uh, I don't know, Murph, what do you think? It looks great to me. It looks awesome, dude. It looks amazing. It's all going to be line work. It's not going to be much for shading, I don't believe. Uh, it's up to Tommy because he's the artist. So we'll see how it turns out. But uh, we're going to warm up a little bit because Scrawny Me is freezing yet sweating. That's nerves for you. So we're going to warm up a bit and then we're going to head back in. So, uh... Spankwagon.net. Tattoo, bitches. <laughs>
We're here tonight for uh, Scott Pilgrim coming it out, and you know, you gotta hit it up comic book style. You should also hit up Comic Oasis. We've got a great selection of everything. Great store, beautiful stuff, back issues, new stuff, everything that you need and more. So come check us out. shoulder blade. Mm. Oh my god. That fucking hurt. Uh oh. Do you have any of the, the orange stuff yet? The... What orange stuff? The yellow shit. You know the clean shit. Yeah, we still got some. Where is it? You said the pole? Uh, you laugh, but I used to be That's really dirty. fat. That's dirty. Now, who's the, who's the big boy? All right, Kevin, put some gloves on. Ah, uh, training time. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kevin, that Parkinson's all cleared up, right? <laughs> yeah, between him and Michael J. <laughs> Fox. Oh, oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> Hi, I'm Holly, manager at Comic Oasis. Uh, worked there for four years, so it must be a good place to come. Come see. Uh, check out the books and stuff that we got. Now I'm done. <laughs> Go see Scott Pilgrim in theaters today. Uh, you can go down to Comic Oasis, get all six of the uh, volumes of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Uh, the movie is very good. Don't uh, don't miss it. You've got to see it in theaters, though, because it's, the movie is visually stunning. Okay? Don't, don't miss it in theaters. That's my only advice to you. And we're good. Now, Kevin, we know you've done your own leg. Have you yep. done any other people's uh, tattoos since yeah, then? I did a sleeve yesterday. A whole sleeve? Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Nice try, Chris. Damn. <laughs> oh, this 
bad boys spitting ink big time. I don't think I'd want to see that actually. I mean, as it's happening. I really don't. For me, it's a semi unknown pain, and then you turn around and there's this piece of art that's on your body forever, with you forever. You know, that's, that's awesome. Seeing it happen, I don't think people would appreciate Van Gogh as much if they watched him paint, you know? I don't think people would appreciate Michelangelo as he was sculpting. But didn't he have an audience as he was doing the Sistine Chapel? Um, I think he locked people out. I, we, you know what, we'll have to do this in, and call this segment Spank Wagon Homework. So when we come back to this segment, we'll have an answer. No, you know what? No, we're not doing the homework. We have viewers for that. Folks, for those of you at home, if you uh, know if Michelangelo or if any famous artist allowed an audience while he was working, please give us a call and let us know. You can leave that on our voicemail. Yeah, what's the number? We got it on the card? Uh, no, it's not on the card. I'll put the voicemail number across the bottom of the screen. Or you can always email us to us at uh, series at spankwagon.net or Twitter or Facebook or any of the other million ways to get hold of us. All of which is managed by Murphy. How are your pants? My pants are good. Awesome. Alright, now I'm telling you like. Hey. Hey. Do you like fixing my things away someday? Oh, I do not mind touching your ass. Okay, cool. Well, can you, like, when you're done with that, can you, like, draw it up? I'm going to do it later. But, um... I want more than two. I want like one more syrup here. Oh, bigger syrup down here. Okay, let's try it later. Oh yeah, you look mad. Isn't it fucked up? He's supposed to make it that much better. Thanks, Lou. I have the absolute worst job, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Catching shot in a porn. Right now, right now, right now. She's gonna be one of the girls in the movie. Is she now? Nice. We'll know her by the name tag. Hey, Mark. Yes, sir. That's one badass tattoo. Thank you. Thank him. It's all his art. I just came in and said gears. I was thinking one thing, and he drew badass. They do have one way because I have a super dope camera. But uh, I do have one question for Tommy though. That looks like we're done now. Tommy, will you do the next one when I'm ready for it? Yes. Awesome. That's right, folks. Tommy Gunn, official tattoo artist of Spank Wagon. Okay, good. Still your chair, Tommy. Here, straighten up, Mark. There we go. That is perfect. You happy with that, Mark? I am giddy. That is amazing. It's product time, and as you know, here at Spankwagon, spankwagon.net, we're fans of beer. We have your registered alcoholic and your lightweight alcoholic here to test yet another beer in the Spankwagon kitchen. Yes. Now, uh, this time, we have... Hmm. Alpine Wit, and this is from the Fox Brewing Company, foxbrews.com. They're based out of here in Vegas. Really? Uh, so, yeah. We've got the Alpine Wit. Um, you can usually find these beers at pretty much any big alcohol chain here in Vegas. Um, a couple of the grocery stores have had it. And because I have a website, uh, again, foxbrews.com, you can actually probably go online and see where you can order yours. Yes. I will say right now, this is a Belgian white ale. I am not a particular fan of white ales. Uh, but we'll give it a try. It says here on it, malt beverage brewed with coriander and orange peel. So I'm being judgmental. 
from the onset. I don't know how much I'm going to like it, but let's give it a try. Now, you got to remember in your Belgian whites, coriander is a pretty prevalent taste. Um, for those of you who don't know, coriander is cilantro seed. So you find that in a lot of Belgian brews, especially the whites. Um, you do see it in the golds, but not as much. So, Murph, I'm thinking for this, um, why don't we get the frosted or get some chilled mugs out? Chilled mugs it is. Now, you know us, we're not huge fans of the chilled mugs. Um, it's good when you have um, certain kinds of beer. Look, chilled mugs always give you, they cause you to lose taste of beer. Because what it'll do, um, look, cold ice cubes, too cold of water, actually numbs your taste buds. You numb your taste buds, you don't get the full flavor of anything. The other problem is the cold mug will cause the water to crystallize across the top and around the edges, so you actually get ice. Ice breaks down the beer proteins, it makes the beer less prevalent, and you get more of the taste of the crystals. But in this case, we're going to give it a shot. By the way, this is my favorite bit we do on the show. Not going to lie to you guys, we've done three of these back to back to back. We're just getting drunk in the middle of an afternoon. So, um, again, right off the bat, it is a locally brewed beer, simple plain white top. Good pop on the uh, on the onset, and something I always look for in small local brews: rubberization on the on a ring on the inside of the cap. A lot of times, you get companies that'll cheap on that. They don't have the rubber ring on the inside of the cap, which means the beer does not stay sealed. Rubberized cap, but it is a simple cap. It is not one that's been printed. Again, as we do with all beers, simple sniff. That's different. That's very different. That yeah, almost that's has a, a foodie taste. Yeah. Or a foodie scent. And I mean foodie like you're smelling someone cook pasta. Almost like almost like ham. Yeah. Are you getting ham out of that? Getting, that's what I'm getting. Like a and I don't have any ham in the fridge, I promise. Yeah. We're not big ham drinkers. Give it a here. try here. Alright, remember small angle when you're pouring on the glass, you always pour at an angle. That way you limit the head. But at the very end, right about there, you tip the glass and give it a little splash. Why do we do this? Number one, it limits the amount of head. Now, some guys like head. I'm a big fan of head, just not in my beer. There you go, a little splash. It is a simple 12-ounce bottle, so we're not going to get the traditional spank wagon full glass test on this one, but uh, why not? All right, so give it another sniff now that we have a broader range and it has mixed with oxygen. Still not enjoying the scent on this one. Yeah, me neither. This is... I'm getting ham. Ham and... Again, yeah. It's more of a food like scent a than a beer scent. Yeah. Man, I'm not even getting fruit off of this. I'm getting ham and fruit, like like a like a, like a roast pig almost. Alright, let's give it a shot. Right. Again, way, what we talked about, the ice crystals, they are forming on the edges of the glass and they are falling down into the beer. And this uh, review is brought to you by Spankwagon, spankwagon.net. Dot .net. By the way, we never say this enough. We are Spankwagon.net is proudly hosted by CanisHosting.com. Sponsor show. Which we also uh, think are big fans of beer. So anyway, um, he has to be. He's a Detroit fan. Yeah, he's in Detroit. If he's not drunk right now, there's a problem. All right, Trencher. Drink, bitches. Oh, that's not good. That is nasty. That is not good. Did this beer go skunky? I don't think so. It's only been in my fridge for, I don't know, not that long. I bought a six pack of it and I gave it to a couple of friends. They did not like it. I wanted to save a single one left so we could review it. I'm mm -hmm. getting that. Again, I'm getting more of the coriander and less of the orange peel. I'm not getting any fruit out of this taste. Um, again, white ales to me are not good. I do not enjoy white ales and this backs up my opinion. Um, the aftertaste is actually it's a little... Uh, it's almost too much like the carbonation's coming through the beer. Like, I can't taste the beer as much as I can taste the carbonation. Um, so I, myself, on the spank wagon scale of 1 to 5, 1 being coarse, 5 being uh, utopious, uh, utopious uh, I'm going to have to give this a solid 1.5 because, really, it still is better than coarse if you have to have a beer. <laughs> um, oh, man, that's... Uh... I don't even want to have another drink, I'm sorry. Mm. You know, what I found is if I run it across my whole tongue, I get more of that flavor, but it shouldn't take that much. Yeah, I'm not even, I'm going to give it a one. I'm going to give it a course. Mm. It is not a good beer. 
Uh, sorry, Fox Brews, foxbrews.com. I apologize if we're doing, if you feel we're doing you wrong with this, but this is just not a good beer. But this it won't is, uh, keep us from trying anything else. So no, if absolutely you, not. Uh, have another beer you would like us to try, whether you're uh, a brewer or if you're one of our listeners and fans and followers, yeah. uh, let us know by going to spankwagon.net, telling us what beer we should try. And we'll try almost anything. Here's here's the problem here, Trench. We have one rule on Spank Wagon. What's that? We don't waste beer. Yeah, we do. No. Yeah, we do. Come on now. Yeah, we do. We've lived by this for years. <coughs> we, we waste this shit. Oh, really? I don't enjoy this beer. <sighs> I can't. No, 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 don't, don't do that. Enjoy your beer. Oh. Yeah, look at that. I mean, guys, you see that carbonation? It is just... The carbonation is, takes over. Yeah. This is... It looks like a good beer. It, oh, yeah, it's got a good color. It's got a beautiful color. Yeah, but it's just... Beautiful consistency for beer, but... I mean, even... You guys saw the big pour there. I only got a small amount of head. It didn't go everywhere, but this is... You know, Fox Brews, foxbrews.com. Guys, please, try harder. Try again. Uh, I gotta break the rule. I can't drink all this. He's breaking his own rule. Breaking the rule. All right. Well, with that said, we'll be back. You should go, uh... Go check, go check the website. Over there! The website! The website! It's there! It's there! there. there. Spankwagon.net. Drink, bitches, but just not this. Oh, man, that's mm. wrong. So many flavors. Get the beer. Yeah. Here, let's... Uh, Here's on the front. Uh, here, here you go. No, no, no. Let's go back on camera for a few minutes. Let's do some stand-up stuff here. <laughs> yeah, we can go black and tan with this if we really want to. Not really black and tan, but dark and tan. Alright. How much time we got left? Oh, oh yeah, right. 40 minutes. We've got 20 minutes to take left. I know you got something else you want to do, so let's let's do a wrap up with this. Am I in frame? Am I good standing up straight? Um, no. Corner. Probably should have asked that before we did all of this. Okay, ready? Yeah. Alright guys, well, welcome back to Spankwagon. Spankwagon.net. We've done quite a bit of drinking in this show for a Sunday afternoon. Time out, you just put time into it. Okay. Alright, well I'll say an afternoon. So. Okay. Alright. Here we go. In three, two. Alright guys, welcome back to Spankwagon. Spankwagon.net. We've done quite a bit of drinking for one afternoon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By the way, uh, we are enjoying currently the prickly pear. And of course, we talked about our favorite mini keg, the New Castle. Yep, absolutely. Um, so you need to check that out. Go to your local grocer if they have it. More importantly, go to your local alcohol dealer. Um, yeah, you know, guys, I gotta say this, and I don't say this enough. Look, there are lots of little tiny liquor stores and homebrew stores and uh, local breweries. Look, mass produced beer is okay. Um, guys like Lion and Krugel, uh, Sam Adams, guys like that. Newcastle or Red Gray. Stripe, one Red of Stripe, own favorites. Hooray beer. But look, don't discount your local homebrew. You know, check out any local brewing uh, clubs you've got around, any brew stores. You can find some really amazing beers there. Um, we've really been lucky here in Vegas where um, we have a couple of places here that have uh, really specialized in, in under the radar beer. Um, you know, the Freakin' Frog here in Vegas does an amazing job of making sure they always keep new and interesting things on tap. And uh, I, I can say for sure, if you go and see John, I believe is his name, the biker guy, uh, he will hook you up with some damn good beer uh, for, for <laughs> woo, he'll knock you on your <laughs> One beer, and I'm like, I'm good. We've got a couple of 8, 10, 12% beers, not to mention the Utopias. Mm. Uh, oh, oh, treasure. We're drinking beer. Uh, have we told this story? I think you have on the radio show, but you've never shown it. Guys, this is the infamous Utopius glass. Uh, yes, it is in Tupperware. Yeah. Every other year, uh, Sam Adams puts out a beer called Utopius. Um, it is an amazing, creamy, wine-like beer. I think it has something like 18 to 25% alcohol. -like beer. It's very brandy-like, yeah. And uh, they, they brew an entire keg and they only use the top 10% of it. So the rest gets wasted. 
Um, it goes for about two to two hundred and fifty dollars a bottle, unless yes. you sit and save the bottle. If you save the bottle in the right condition for up to, you could probably safely go up to seven to ten years. Mm -hmm. You could change a decimal point in your favor. A couple of decimal points. I've seen it go for two grand on eBay. Um, that's one decimal point. Yeah, that's one. Well, if you keep point. saving, it can, fuck off. Don't make me get the tattoo again. Right here. Um, so. We bought a shot, just a simple, uh, like a serious ounce and a half shot, went for 25 bucks at the Frog. That's fine, I'll pay it, but I stole the glass. And the reason I stole the glass is so I can do this. Oh, it is a Glenn Levitt glass, which, by the way, will never get washed. Not until next year when it comes back out again. Oh, there's that maple-y... Oh, guys, if you cannot find Utopia somewhere, get your buddies together. Buy a bottle of it. Invest in a bottle. Yeah. Invest in two bottles. One to drink, one to keep. Don't don't pour it into this. No, 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 it's no. It's a perfect beer. It is a sipping beer. It's to very, be treated oh. as if it's a great whiskey or a great scotch or a great <sighs> bourbon. Treat it respectfully. I do keep this glass inside of a glad box, inside of Tupperware here. Why? So that I can enjoy it until the next one comes out. But today, um, this prickly pear... It's good stuff. Yep. So we learned Newcastle Keg is a win. Oh, very much so. Prickly Pear is a good after dinner win. Oh, very much so. And that this, this is shit. Is not good. This, this is gross. This smells like olive oil. I you smell that? I don't, I want to enjoy the yeah, pear. Yeah, try the pear. Mm. Pear is going to save us. All right. So this beer review, spankwagon.net. Dot net. I was going to say find us online, spangway.net. Dot net. That's the beer talking. Um, it's afternoon and we're drunk. You're drunk. I'm a lightweight. You're a little tiny lightweight, but that's okay. You know, uh, guys, look, we've been doing this recorded show for a couple of weeks now. Yes. Uh, we've had some complaints. We have. Some people, well... Some people don't like the we are not spank wagon anymore because they can't sit around on a Friday night and watch us. Guys, look, this is what we're going to do now. Uh, this gives us the opportunity to bring... I mean, look, in this episode alone, we've had Trencher getting a tattoo. We've had us over at the Palms for the Scott Pilgrim premiere. Hanging out with the very cool people of Comic Oasis. ComicOasis.com, Cheyenne and Rainbow here in Las Vegas. We've got us doing a beer review um, and some other things we're going to mix in that you've already seen because this is at the end of the video. Um, I mean, hell, guys, we're having fun with this. And this gives us the opportunity to bring you more content. So, look, if there's something you like, something you don't like, let us know because we'll do what we can to kind of alleviate those fears and see if we can maybe take something you say and work it into the program. If you say, look, we don't like the fact that Trencher constantly hides behind the camera, we'll bring Trencher out in front of the camera. If you don't like the fact that I don't spend enough time merely inebriated or with porn chicks, we'll do everything we can to correct that. If you want to be on the show, if you have something that you want us to show on the show, if you have a friend of yours who wants to be on the show, let us know. Series at spankwagon.net. Send Ooh. us an email. No. Facebook, Twitter. We've abandoned MySpace, much like most of the planet. Yeah. All we have now is beer. Hooray, beer. This is like the best show ever. It is now. <sighs> All right, so with that said, check us out online. Go to the website, spankwagon.net. Dot net. Drink, bitches. Mm. That's really good. I like that. Good stuff. I'm a little woozy when I do this. Drunk.